the box, write it down, and we'll get to you later. Once these gentlemen get through, then we hope to have a pretty robust conversation with you all. So write the comments down and look forward to the dialogue. We have Grant. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for being here. So I'll go quickly. CWD, chronic wasting disease, is a disease that impacts a prion, which is a bent protein. All mammals have prions. This one, however, is irregular shape and has the ability to make other prions become irregular shape. And it's a nasty thing that if you put it in Clorox or something like that or cook it at about 1,500 degrees, it's still infecting. So it's not something easy to take care of. It's not a virus. It should not be confused with EHD. It started about here, and I won't go through the whole chronology, but over time, I spread a lot. Uh, Tennessee, he added this map. I'm not aware of anywhere else, but it is spreading. It's not just one place. So, as I mentioned, it belongs to a fatal. It is, as far as we know, 100% fatal. Big old name, transmissible, spongy form, encephalopathies. In the same family as mad cow disease, but not the same. It's never been shown that CWD or something to do with deer on that in CWD goes to cattle, which is a real blessing. It's never been shown to go to a human in the field, and certainly thousands or possibly millions of deer have been consumed, especially early on in northern Colorado places before we even had a name for what was going on. Again, related to him myself, and one that's really old that really intrigues me is scrapie and sheep. So we've known, sheep, we've known about it for a long time, and it didn't cross the, the barrier from sheep to other animals. So that should be somewhat comforting to us. It's in the same family of diseases. Misphotoprotein, all mammals care. We talked about that. When a disease is associated and they refold into others, then it starts snowballing in the animal. And a really bad thing about this disease, it can be in the critter for 16 months or longer and not show any outward signs or lesions. And I think that lag time is one of the things about this disease that makes it very difficult to communicate. Well, deer look fine on my land. I'm not finding them dead by water like I do HD. Those are all problems in the communication and how serious this disease is. These diseases are not broken down easily but they communicate easily to other animals. Mouth to mouth, critter to critter, critter to a deposit on the ground, maybe through urination, defecation, salivation for sure. So you can see where that leads to getting deer close together and allowing this disease to spread quicker. All the deer family can be impacted and in fact have been impacted at different levels at different critters. It's not just whitetails or mutes all the deer, including caribou in the deer family. Movement of deer in deer parts, many of us believe, I believe, is the way that map got spread really... You're looking like I did something wrong. No? It's good. <laughs> I believe it went, you know, jumped to Tennessee or Pennsylvania places really quickly. It didn't just make one dot on the map and spread out in all directions simultaneously. So moving of deer, when we say deer parts, let's say maybe you're lucky and you tagged a very mature muley or elk in Colorado years ago before knowing you knew any better. You brought the whole critter home except for eviscerating it and took the meat off, took the skull off, whatever, and then put the spine and the spinal cord and the brains on the back 40, which had a lot of prions in there. That could have been a source of infection. That could be one mode of transmission of how it leapfrogged to many areas over time. Contact with the effects, again, the remains. Consumption, there's some scientists that certainly believe that when these are deposited through urination or defecation, it gets in soil, a plant takes the prion up, again, it's not degraded, and then a deer can eat that plant. Gosh, that is super scary, isn't it? Think about this, a crow or a scavenger pecks on a deer that died from CWD, and say it's a crow, flies 100 miles away, which is common for crows, Lights there, defecates, some dies, does whatever, and deposits CWD somewhere else. This is a real map from Pennsylvania of legally transported deer. I think that is extremely scary. 
getting the map. This looks ugly. Let me tell you how ugly it is. I live right there. I'm right in it. This year there was a posse found less than a mile on this side of my farm, less than a mile on this side of the farm. I'm bullseye. I preach this. I would be a hypocrite if I didn't. Our deer season goes to January 15th, our archery season. About January 20th, we will start taking deer down with rifles under permit. I make a living with deer, folks. I'm living. There's no known vaccine, no cure, no practical live test. Please understand this. We can't move deer because we can't test it and say, oh, that deer doesn't have CWD. We can say it has it or we don't know. And we say it has it after the deer is dead. There is no practical, feasible live test. Therefore, we cannot move deer without knowing if we're potentially spreading CWD. Thank you very much.